it. What's up? It's Aaron. Here with, with the channel Boom Modder. Thanks for joining us. We got a... I guess the best way to say it is... We got the sun about to set, clearly. It's probably blinding you. Um, and we got a garden that's all pretty much dead. We got stuff like this that we can take care of still. But for the most part, other than the stragglers, it's uh, all gone. And you're probably thinking, well, that's called uh, the off season. Why are you telling me this? Well, the reason is, this is actually prime time to start feeding. Sounds weird. It's a cold day. It's like 40 degrees outside. And while I like it to be a little bit warmer, um, it's going to be warmer here in the forecast, so what I plan on doing is throwing down some food. And throwing down food is generally a good idea when you don't have a ton of rain, it's not going to be really, really cold. And by really, really cold, I mean like sub-freezing. If it gets up to at least 50 or 60, um, soil temperatures don't increase that much or decrease that much. And there's a bit of a de delayed reaction as far as depth is concerned to soil temperature. So on the off season, you definitely want to feed less often. I'm not advocating a weekly feeding at all, but feeding at least once a month, once every couple weeks, not a bad idea. What you start to do is you start to develop a backlog of food that whatever you're playing this, this garden with next year will end up loving. So that is kind of the, I guess, the, the rationale to what uh, I'm advocating here. Now, as far as practice is concerned, you really want to front load your feeding. It's really crucial. Front loading your feeding, and by, what I mean by that is feeding on the off season, is one of the single biggest boosters to anyone's garden fertility uh, period. As long as you're using the right stuff, the next thing you really need to know is front load your, your feeding. And that means you want a lot of your feeding done even before anything's planted. You want to feed, you know, maybe every couple weeks when it's cold like this, but as you start to get closer to springtime in planting season, you start tightening up your feeding to as if you were planted. And you know, every three or four days, week, that's the feeding regime you want. You want to lay down as much feed as you can. You don't want it to be anaerobic. You want it to be the aerobic feed, but you want to throw it down. And um, that will then, as you plant and as you then come into maturity, that'll build a bunch of uh, microbiome activity, which feeds the root system, uh, feeds your mycorrhizal networks, and creates a bunch of food that the plants have the easiest time uptaking. And then that feeding can happen a couple more times through the season, but I've gotten away with getting very good yields off of a three year feeding cycle, meaning I don't feed for three years. That's literally actually this garden. This garden, this last gar uh, planting I did, which yielded quite a bit, it was on its fourth year of being fed. And normally I don't do that, obviously, but I do a lot of experimentation and I wanted to see how long I could go. Now I think I'm gonna end that experiment. Um, and I feel like I, there's things I've learned that now kind of corrupt it as far as how far the microhorizontal networks can work. But that is something, uh, a thing I'd like to point out. Now, if you want to understand how to feed, um, that's gonna be in an upcoming video. I'm gonna at some point have to show you the application um, as far as how to do it in a garden this size. I've shown before like how I distribute the feed and that's one thing, but I think I should show you guys how to actually apply it to the garden. I want it to be planned before I do that, so it's gonna be a while before that happens, but um, at some point I'm gonna show you guys that. All right, talk to you later. I realized that I was uh, 
shooting an incomplete video. So I'm back here again, and I wanted to show you guys, um, or not show you so much as explain to you guys why the compost should be done in the winter time. It's completely antithetical, um, and front loading is this hard concept to kind of grasp. So the reason why I wanted to talk about front loading the compost tea more was that I omitted a part of the rationale that's really important. So when you're putting down a lot of compost tea, um, in the compost tea methods that I've shown you guys, there will be anaerobic bacteria in your compost tea. And that will make it into your plants. Um, now the key here is at what dilution. And you can have a little bit of anaerobic um, bacteria, like normal soil has anaerobic bacteria. It's, you know, quite anaerobic. Aerobic bacteria will feed the anaerobic bacteria. When you're feeding the compost tea, basically you're taking a little bit of anaerobic bacteria and a lot of aerobic bacteria, um, and you're sacrificing the aerobic bacteria, basically. The aerobic bacteria goes in the soil, and then the anaerobic bacteria slowly just feeds on it. And the stuff I'm gonna to explain to you in the future videos will kind of highlight this process and exactly how to kind of turbocharge it and make it really work for you well. Now, the idea that I didn't kind of touch on that I think is really important is the reason, the rationale behind this is that when a plant is fruiting, when it's you know about to die, it starts fruiting, starts putting off flowers and starts reproducing. That is a stage in which the plant is grabbing as much nutrient as can out of the soil. And if you have too much anaerobic bacteria, or the anaerobic bacteria is feeding really on, a, a lot on other anaerobic bacteria, and there's you know just abundance of anaerobic bacteria, that actually makes its way into the fruit. It makes its way into um, the reproducing organism. And in this case, you know, we're growing uh, gourds and tomatoes mainly. So it'll make it actually into there. And that will be borne out um, in, in ways that you, you don't want. Basically, you'll start seeing that your your harvest will have a, a lower shelf life. It'll start to rot more quickly. It won't be harmful for you um, unless you're putting it directly on the fruit. The plants, um, you know, break it down, but there will be still some bacteria that makes its way in there. And it won't be harmful, but it will definitely reduce your shelf life. And so the reason why you want to front load your compost tea is that you kind of create a lull in the bacteria. You, what you want is a bunch of kind of um, remnants of the bacteria's wars, where they're basically kind of skeletal remnants and secretions that the bacteria makes when they're feeding on nutrients. That's what the plants really love. You want an abundance of that. So the way you get an abundance of that is you front load uh, your compost tea. You create the basically a bunch of bacteria that has a bunch of access to nu nutrients and they all grow a bunch and then fight each other for whatever nutrients left over and then after that you get this you know a ton of material that the plants can um, feed on if you keep running that cycle into the fruiting that's when you start to have decreased shelf life so by front loading all the nutrient that's coming into it in the winter and the spring you're setting the table for a really um, heavy yield and on top of that you're also creating the longest longevity you can as far as shelf life is concerned and um, I've noticed that you know uh, uh, terpenes aromas things that the plant will produce outside of just the yield will also be heightened so not only will you get more of something it will be better quality that's a uh, kind of the best rationale I can I can give you on on why why you want to do it that way and um, in my experiences with doing it that way so um, I'll see you guys in the next video